Here we are, it is the grass season. Behind us we've got a grass court. Me and Ben are at an exhibition at Boodles. Very weird name, I know. And we've got the privilege today to watch some really top talents. Hubi Hercatch in action, one of the best players I think on the grass. He's got a real strong chance of doing well at Wimbledon. We saw Alexi Poprin and a few of the other British talents. Uh, Sissipas's brother was playing in doubles. We got to catch a bit of that. And um, yeah, really happy. Thank you so much to the event for inviting us along. We've had a great day so far in the sun, not as hot as the other days, but still nice. And uh, what have you thought of it all? Yeah, I preferred it not being so hot, to be honest. And uh, I'm actually able to sit here in a black T-shirt and not be uh, sweating one out. So that's really good for me. We've got to see Alex Bublik again. We met him at the UTS. Yep. We've met him here once more. And he still uh, puts me through my paces uh, during an interview. So hopefully we'll get to meet him one more time. And then uh, I'll get better each time I get to speak to him. But. Uh, that's enough of that. We're here today to talk about the men's draw at Wimbledon. We're here to talk about some of the potential threats in the draw as well, because there are many of them. Some of them aren't the seeded players, and there are a lot of interesting uh, draws out there. The Brit Jack Draper's one we definitely need to watch out for. And that whole section of Zverev's quarter, that one is up for grabs, and that is the one that Draper happens to be sitting in. So I'm excited to speak about the draw, excited to speak about grass court tennis in the UK, and let's get stuck into it. Right, let's get straight into it today. What we're gonna do is give our top five players for contenders on the men's. And it couldn't come at a better day being at a tennis event to do something like this because one of mine I've spoken to and that is Hubi Hercatch. What mm. a legend, what a guy. He's very softly spoken. I found the experience um, a bit daunting at the start because he is a big guy. Massive. He is very kind, but you don't often get much back from him. So let us know what you think of, of the interview. He's um, a very kind quiet guy and I find sometimes it's easier to speak to people who are a little bit louder but still he is extremely humble in the fact that his expectations are well grounded he doesn't he's not looking too far ahead I kept referencing the fact that he could play Djokovic he doesn't want to think about that yet he's taking one match at a time the typical answer I feel you're like you were expect. trying to push a lot of these players to look too just, far ahead well because I think it's interesting because I think he's really got a good shot of beating Djokovic this year well, he, if I anyone. honestly believe he will be the favourite come the quarterfinals if he's facing Novak Djokovic. Well, you spoke to two people that Djokovic could meet along the way. Yeah. Alexi Poprin could be his third round opponent and Hercatch could be the quarterfinal opponent uh, for Djokovic. I think the way that Poprin's played against Djokovic in the past, he fancies probably his chances and he wants to get a bit of revenge for... The last time he even brought it up in the interview, he's like, don't remind me of that. I had three break points. So he knows that he sort of threw it away on that day. And if he gets the chance again, maybe he won't be uh, so charitable to Djokovic. And especially a Djokovic not in good form as well. Yeah. Have you enjoyed uh, your interviews you did? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the the first one when I spoke to was uh, Shevchenko. I thought a uh, really nice guy. Uh, had a lot to say. Was a lot just, of fun. Just quickly on the Shevchenko one, because you guys won't know, Ben did extremely well for this one. Reason being, he didn't have any time to prepare anything whatsoever. I had a few questions uh, lined up for her catch and sort of a, I was going down an, an avenue which I wanted to ask him. With you, you didn't have any time to prepare. You just rocked up. He was there waiting and you had to just go off the spot. But I think you produced quite a good interview. Let us know what you guys think. And shout out to our friend behind. <laughs> just, hey. They're actually watering them down at the moment, the grass courts. It looks really cool. Um, I don't think I can show you guys, but you might be able to see it in a second or hear the sprinkler in the oh, background. You can see it a little bit there. But yeah, the Popper interview did really well. The Bublik one, I feel he was a little bit more challenging to oh, speak to. And we've already spoke to him before and he hated your music. so <laughs> He is a challenge himself, I think. And I think that the one thing we got out of him this time that we didn't last time at the UTS was the fact that I think... This is much more his style of event. Yeah. He said he's come from country club to country club. And this is like, this is living the life for a yeah. tennis player. 
you come in, you're not having to play like your top tennis, and you're just it's all a bit for bit of fun, really. And that's what Bublik's about. He's about fun tennis. He's about a little bit tongue in cheek. He's even happy to speak about his tattoos on court today, yeah. which we didn't see at the UTS. So I think he's feeling good energy. And he's going off to meet, meet uh, Nick Kyrgios. <laughs> yeah, I know. I feel like you could have asked a few more questions about his dinner, but we'll yeah. save that for next time. Uh, I really did enjoy your interview in the first one. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, always a bit awkward with... Uh, nice Bob. guy, isn't he? What? No, Shev- the Shev- first one, Shev- Shev- yeah, yeah, really nice guy. I mean, I wasn't expecting to even get a chance to speak to him, to be honest. I thought we were only going to get a chance to speak to her catch. Yeah. But... Uh, pleasantly surprised and somebody we followed on the challenger tour as i said to him and it's great to see him now plying his trade on the on the like main atp tour he's actually a really good player uh, and he's very new to the grass as he was happy to say yeah. but a tough first round match for him he plays ugo umber as we know is a real threat on the grass and what a beautiful venue this one is i can understand why bublik does like it so much uh, the grounds are immaculate if you've got a computer near you, I'm sure you do, because you're watching us, if not your phone. Just have a Google of Stoke Park in Slough, is it? Something that's like near uh, Slough. It's close to Slough. It's Nearby like there. Stoke Park. I think it's like Stoke Poges. Gerrard's Cross, I think, yeah, is fairly it, close as well. It is so nice. Like a real expensive wedding venue, <laughs> as per se. <laughs> you've got the golf courses all around. It's pretty much a golf course. You've got lovely greens. Everyone here is all dressed up in suits. Me nice and Ben dresses. aren't dressed up at all. Tried look, a little bit. We look like the riffraff who's just been let in through the, through the back door. We've just had a, a nice lunch, very expensive lunch. It was a gaucho steak. Delicious. All paid for. So, yeah, really privileged. And thank you so much to uh, the guys at Boodles who invited us along. Thanks to Faye as well. Yeah, just... we've, we've had a really good day and it's been, uh, it's been nice to get close to the players. Uh, but let's get into the main body of this episode where we're going to be talking some more tennis in detail. The draw's out. We've just spoken about that. Um, but let's speak directly and I want you Ben to give your top five players on the men's we'll start with number five and this is based off a few factors so form how they play on the yeah. grass how you expect them to do at Wimbledon the fact the draw I think yeah. that does make an impact now we know the draw and um, I guess the other one is where do you who do you think I want I want you to out these five players I'm expecting the four semi-finalists <laughs> and a quarter finalist. Well, this is, or at the, the very least, all of them need to make the quarter final. Well, exactly, and I've got the whole draw up just in front of us, just in case you're wondering why I keep on leaning forward, just to uh, refresh the uh, laptop yep. so it doesn't go off, and so we can see all of the players. And I'll pop it up on the screen for people yep. who are watching at home as well. And just well, the top half is the Yannick Sinner, Carlos Alcaraz. Bottom half, Zverev. Novak Djokovic they're the big four seeds there let's start with your number five Ben for the fifth the player who you think is going to sneak in who do you think is going to really do well I'm going to be going for Tommy Paul I Tommy think Paul's your number five has okay. to be has to be Tommy Paul I think the Queen's champion showed some great great uh, quality on the grass courts and made uh, some of his victories look quite easy. I have to say, Massetti looked in good form. Draper looked in good form. But Tommy Paul seems to have just another level that he sort of taps into, I think, when he when he's really playing well. He's someone who can beat Carlos Alcaraz as well. And I think Alcaraz struggles sometimes against somebody he doesn't do too well in head-to-heads against. Yep. So that could be a danger for Carlos Alcaraz. He's in the same quarter as him, and that could be... Carlos Alcaraz is Achilles heel in this Wimbledon. Yeah, my number five is Jack Draper, the Brit, who's recently beaten Carlos Alcaraz on a grass court uh, at Queens. That bodes so well. So important for him to do that. I think yep. it is. It was a big match as well because Carlos dropped down to number three yeah. in the, with the seed Changed in the Wimbledon. Draw. And I'm looking at his draw right now he is in the, the the section with a fritz and a zverev sandwiched in between the two of them i think he can beat them i really do i think um he's got a really good shot you've got rublev there not in form 
Uh, Sissa Passer, I think, is a winnable match always, especially at Wimbledon. Cord, I think, is dangerous. Massetti can be a bit dangerous. But they're the big seeds. Aside from that, the other names, I don't see any of them got doing very well. I think the unseeded section here for these players is one of the weakest ones. And on that basis, I truly believe that Draper has a good shot to play a Massetti or a quarter, which would mean the quarterfinals. I think he's going to make the quarters potentially beat them and get all the way to the semi-final. That's why he's in my top five contenders for Wimbledon. Wow. Yeah. I mean, uh, you stay a good case. Draper, someone I'd love to go for. Obviously, Andy Murray, we're sort of seeing... I think it's time. It's in the England. It, we can't, we're not going to have any of the problems with weather or conditions or familiarity with courts. He would have played at Wimbledon many times. He's, yeah, he's yeah. familiar with it. He's going to have all of the home support. No heat, heat stroke, nothing like that. <laughs> well, it's not He's that hot now, right. is it? That's the thing. The, the way that it's actually gone this week, I think that he'll be happy to see the back end of all of those 30 degree heats. And now we've got, it's down to about, say, 20s, say early 20s. It's, it's easy to play in this type of weather, I think, if you are Jack Draper. He only suffers in the really, really hot conditions. The only problem I think that he could face in this little section that he has at the moment uh, I think it's Taylor Fritz. That's my. I don't think I'm not going to say Sasha Zverev. I think Taylor Fritz is going to be my number four in here. Okay. And the reason I say this is because I think Taylor Fritz has actually shown how good he is at Wimbledon in the past. We saw him when we were at Wimbledon. Was it a couple of years ago against Rafa? It went all the way to that fifth and final set. And if he doesn't play a big player like a Djokovic or a Rafa. I think he does beat most other players. We saw him, he's been getting better and better in slams and he's doing well at the moment in Eastbourne. I think he, I think he stands a really good chance and Taylor Fritz, watch this space. We love the Wolf as well, his coach, well, physio. Yep. I think that it could be a good year for Taylor Fritz. Yeah, not for me. Jack Draper's going to do him. My number four is Tommy Paul. I think a lot of that is draw dependent again. And the big reason is he's with Kasper Ruud there. Kasper yeah. Ruud, for me, is one of the weakest seeds. He's not very good at grass and doesn't seem to do well. He'd much rather have a driver in his hand or playing on a golf course somewhere. In <laughs> fact, he'd probably like it round here. I'd love it. But just not over there, just more that way where you've got the golf courses. And Most he definitely. would be uh, in his element in a situation like that. Do I see him going far at Wimbledon? Certainly not. On that basis, Tommy Paul... If he, if he can get through that section, I'm looking at it there. Kwetfa, Martyra, Kazo, Mensik, Bublik maybe is a bit dangerous. I think Tommy Paul will be able to get through all of them. Mm. He's looking good, playing very well on grass, just won a title. He is going to advance and Tommy Paul is my number four. I'm almost certain we're going to see him against Carlos Alcaraz in the quarterfinals. I mean, that would be the most exciting matchup from that section. I hope we get to and see it. And he can it. beat Carlos as well. That is the that is yep. the big thing. Um, Carlos not coming in with full confidence, obviously losing at Queens, losing his title as well. Just one Roland Garros, but yeah, no confidence. Yeah, but it's a different surface. He didn't transition well this year, and that could be a worry. It does worry me a little bit. Even though his draw is easier than Yannick Sinner, it, he worries me more than Yannick Sinner, and that is testament to how well Sinner's played all year. I think Yannick Sinner, you can throw anyone in front of him right now, and I think he's able to find a way to beat them. And that's, and this is why it makes it tough for my top three. I think I'm probably going to. Who's gonna, your fifth, by the way? Tommy Paul as well. I was going Paul Fritz. So I got okay. two Americans. I'm actually going to throw her catch in at number three. Okay. Um, people may be surprised. They're like, well, you've only got. The top three are Djokovic, Alcaraz and Sina, and I've not put Djokovic in there. Well, I thought he might be number two. Well, he might be. <laughs> but <laughs> no. the Brighton C. You've turned Hubi, on him, Ben. What's Hubi, happened? Hubi Herkatch, I think, will be number three. Uh, the, the most, I'd say, exemplary grass court player that we have, really... I think that he just plays so well on the surface and he does it at all different events as well. He's not just like, a, oh, he's only good at Halle or only good here. He does it at Wimbledon. He does it at the smaller events as well. I think that it's about time he stepped up right now and uh, it's his opportunity to maybe get to a Grand Slam final. 
he's so privileged to not have to play a Sinner or Alcaraz until a final. I like his draw. I think he can. he's got Djokovic in the quarters potentially. I think he can win that match. I really believe in him. I've spoke to him today. I've given him a pep talk in his ear. <laughs> I've told him what he needs to do to beat Novak. Uh, <laughs> let's see if he's taken it on board. Uh, on that basis, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. He's not my number three. I think um, he, he's generally got a great shot of the final. Yeah, I mean... I know that I'm going to get a lot of hate in the comments section and I'm ready for it. Um, but Djokovic hasn't made a final this year and it fills me with a lot of dread. I feel it fills me with dread for the Olympics, the fact he's entering Wimbledon with an injury and going to just give it a, a go. I know he wants to win as many as he's Federer. He's not got an injury, he's recovering from, yeah, from then, surgery. But that's what worries me. It's a difference. And then it's going to take a little... Will he have the time? Will he face somebody who's in hot form? Like you're saying, he's playing a qualifier in the first round, which is never ideal. No. And it may run him. He may lose a set there. He may lose a set in the second round. You never know. And if he plays Poprin and Poprin's got through his ones with ease, then that could be a terrible draw from him. We've seen him go to five yeah. sets at Roland Garros with Massetti. We've seen him go to five sets with uh, Serundolo. If he goes to five sets a couple of times before he even meets her catch, I think her catch is probably going to go straight sets, straight yeah. sets, straight sets through all of his. Well, Poprin did very well against Djokovic at the Australian Open. I did ask Poprin about that, so if you want to check it out, go <laughs> yeah. watch the video. Uh, really good to speak to him. And I spoke to both players, really, who have Djokovic very close in the draw. Yeah. He, could, he could play both of them at Wimbledon, so it's fascinating to see. Um, and yeah, down to our number two, I guess. I know we know who they are. It's Sinner yeah. and Alcaraz. Yeah. Uh, the number one and the number three now. They're on the same half. Which way did you go? Did you go Alcaraz two, Sinner one? Yeah, for me. So I we're, think... we're in agreement then. We've got the same top three, just a different four and five. Um, what's your reasons then for Alcaraz, to, the, the reigning champion, the Roland Garros champion, to not be. To have, who's got an easier draw He's than the, Sinner as well. Yeah, I know. Why not? Carlos Alcaraz. Surely he is looking at this thinking, I've got a really the, good shot. And the Halla curse. We haven't spoken about the, the Halla curse, curse as well. well. Yeah. Sinner just obviously coming off the win there. It is a... There is part of me that feels like if I keep throwing all my eggs in his basket, am I putting too much pressure on him? But I've seen him... He just seems to be now one of those top players like your Djokovic's, like your Nadal's. When you get to a slam now, he has five sets to beat you. He just you. lost to Carlos Alcaraz at Roland Garros. He was terrible at Roland Garros up until this Roland Garros. And he got to the semi-final. think next year, he's probably going to be in the final. That's just what I mean. He's on that trajectory right now as Yannick Sinner. So I think Alcaraz, he will do well to get to the semi-final. And I think... He should get to the semi-final, Alcaraz. I'm expecting to see Sinner versus Alcaraz semi-final. It's just about who we get in the other semi-final. And I think Sinner on grass against Alcaraz, there's only one winner for me, and that's going to be Yannick Sinner. I think I agree. I think if we get the semi-final of Sinner, Alcaraz, he'll win. But I have a big fear inside of me that Sinner could go out early. And what I mean by that is a round two against Matteo Berrettini, someone who's got pedigree at the event, who's dangerous. Sinner sometimes can be a bit of a slow starter. We've seen him recently dropping a set to Matet, yeah. uh, early doors. I'm worried about that dynamic only. Aside from that, if he gets through the first few, I think even tougher matches, he'll be all right. I think he, he's, he's so good and gets the, gets the run going, he's dangerous. And for that reason, I've only marginally had him edging Carlos Sardekas, but I don't think there's much in it at all. And if anything, it's become closer than what I first thought, because I would have had Sinner a little bit further in front than Sardekas. Since looking at the draw, they've become closer and closer, and now it's a 51-49 situation. So close. Yeah, I mean... For me, I feel like Sinner, this surface is much more suited to his game. Um, I feel that this Haller curse thing as well. But then it, you say it's suited to his game. He's not got a nowhere near as, uh, the same level of win percentage on grass as Carlos Alcaraz. I know. He's, a, he's an anomaly, Alcaraz, and the fact that he's rarely played it, but then he's done so well on it. I still think Sinner, the way his year has been, this year is just unparalleled to all of his career. He's, he is the player to beat right now, and he's got such confidence when he one. plays. He plays in a way now. That's why I think this Halla curse, it says on here, it's, a, it's of all the Halla winners other than Roger Federer. And I'm saying Yannick Sinner is on his way to be like that style of player. 
nearly unbeatable in tournaments. So I think the Haller curse can get rid of that. For the, that's for starters. Look, Bublik, he, he avoided it last year. He went all the way to the fourth round. If he can do it, Yannick Sinner, don't even worry. Berrettini will not get in your way. And I think that you'll be fine. Yeah, and I did love Ben questioning Bublik about the Haller curse. <laughs> if you want to watch it, you can see Bublik challenging Ben on, on, the, on the curse and how it works. Uh, I'm not going to say any more. You have to watch the video. But thanks, everyone, for watching. This is our top five contenders for Wimbledon on the men's. Let us know in the comments section. Would you include Djokovic in there? Who is your top five? Are you more of a sinner or an Alcaraz man? Do you have someone in there all complete, completely different to who we've mentioned? There is, of course, some great names. And um, yeah, really looking forward to Wimbledon. So please hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you soon for more Wimbledon action.